So in this video, I'm just gonna run through how to use BTC Recover to recover a blockchain.com wallet password. This is useful in situations where you might've forgotten part of the password or maybe have a mistake in how you've remembered it or written it down. This is an updated version of my previous video here, basically reflecting the new process that you need to download the blockchain.com wallets. Uh, basically it changed as of late 2022 and uh, rather than play whack-a-mole and try and constantly support and update the way that is done, uh, this video will include a new process for downloading the wallet file. Uh, everything else though with BTC Recover has remained the same, uh, so let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, that way you can stay in loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now the very first thing you have to do is download BTC Recover, and I've got a video that walks through the process and how to do that here. If you prefer text documentation, that's fine too. Basically the process for installing BTC Recover is all covered here. I've got a link for that in the description. And one thing to note is that the process has been updated now since I originally made this video to now support OpenCL acceleration, which uh, will normally make quite a significant difference uh, in terms of improving the speed for recovering blockchain.com or old blockchain.info wallets. So definitely worth doing. You can also then just go onto usage examples and just click on recovering a blockchain.com wallet for basically a text version of everything in this video here. Though again with the note that most of the example commands given here don't actually include uh, what you need to enable OpenCL acceleration. You can just read the documentation for that. Once you've got BTC Recover installed, now it's time to download your wallet file. All right, so to download our wallet file, first thing we need to do is head over to blockchain.com. Now before we go any further, what we're going to need to do is turn on the developer console for your browser. We're going to want to enable the web developer tools. So we're going to turn that on. And once that's on, we want the network tab. Now we can go and say log in. And you'll see that as we click on the page, all the different things that are being loaded into our browser are being showed down here. And uh, this is just in Firefox. The process in like Chrome or Brave is pretty much the same. And now we're gonna enter our wallet ID in here. Now I'll just use this example wallet ID here. It won't work for you because you don't have access to the 2FA. So I'll just say continue. And the password, we'll just put in anything. I'll just say test and then say log in. There we go. So now it's gonna actually prompt for a 2FA and we won't save that password. So I'll just check that on my inbox. So that'll send me an email. I'll just say I wanna authorize login. And we'll say verify. And now I've also got 2FA turned on on this wallet here. So I'll stick that in. Now, after we've approved it over email and enter the 2FA, that is when we're gonna see the wallet file show up. So I'll say login. Now it's gonna say wrong password, that's fine. So what we're gonna do is you'll see down here, there is something where the file is called wallet. And essentially uh, it'll be a HTTP post. And if we click on response, you'll actually see something that looks like this. It's a bunch of JSON. So it'll, be, it'll say payload and there'll be a whole bunch of stuff. And then there'll be PBKDF2 iterations 5000 version four. This right here is my wallet file. So what I can actually do here in Firefox is just right click on it. I can just say copy value and I want to copy the response. And I can then just open up Notepad just in Windows and then right click and say paste. And now what I have is your wallet file. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna save that as and we're gonna navigate that to our BTC recover folder just because that's the simplest place to put it and we'll call it wallet.aes.json and look, we'll just change the file type to be all files. Otherwise it'll go shoving a .txt on the end. And then we'll just say save. And there we go. So now what we're gonna do is the first example is gonna be one where we have a token list file. Basically what a token list file is, is it's a way that you can tell BTC Recover that you might have little bits and pieces that you often use to make a password up. So maybe um, you would have certain words and phrases that you often use in passwords and rearrange in different ways. So this example one here uh, essentially is telling us that we know that this BTCR was the thing that the password started with. That was the first token. Um, and we know that it also would have had these words in them because they're words that we would commonly have used. You maybe had used words like symbols like this to put in between these different words. And you also might recall that you had a habit of like sticking the year in there somewhere as well. So uh, that's what this token list is going to be doing. And uh, I'll just be running this command here because I've downloaded the wallet file. Uh, but again, this command that I've got here is actually the same command. It's just using the wallet file that is included in the test wallet folder. And I'll just run through the commands I've got here. 
So firstly, we're using BTC Recover. Um, we're telling it where the wallet file is that we want it to use. And we're also going to assume that we uh, maybe had capitalized some words in there that we'd forgotten about. So we just turned on typos caps lock as well. And that is the link to our token list file. So if we just hit go, um, it is going to run and it does give us a security warning, which is valid for this one because we are running it with a wallet file, not with an extract. And uh, that's just going to sit there and run for a minute. And there we go. So it's actually found the password just here. In this case, we got really lucky and then it found it quite early in the full setup password, so it's going to test. So that's how you recover the main password for the wallet. And now what we'll look at is how to recover a second password uh, in that BTC Recover lets you do this too. So basically we knew the main password was this one here, BTCR test password from uh, the first example. And we're going to use a password list file. So a password list file is a really good one to use if you are quite sure of what the password is, uh, or perhaps only have three or four different passwords that you use uh, rather than lots of little building blocks. And um, we have a look at this example here. Um, this password list file basically just has what I was thinking was the password. And you'll notice in this one that basically uh, it has some capital letters in there that don't belong, as well as a letter S at the end. So there's actually four typos uh, in a password of that length, which is pretty bad. Uh, I've also just stuck the top 20 passwords off the Rocky list. And so basically what BTC Recover is going to do is it's going to try each password on this list and it's also going to apply some typos to them. So I'll just take this example command here and we'll stick that command prompt and I'll just run through uh, what all of these different arguments do. So basically in this example, we are using a different wallet file just because that one I downloaded before doesn't actually have second password enabled because you don't seem to be able to enable second passwords anymore. We also are telling BTC Recover that we are looking for a second password, not just the first one. Now, in terms of the kinds of typos that we think might be in our password, we're telling it that we might have some letters that are the wrong case. So basically what BTC Recover will go through and do is uh, it'll try capitalizing all the lowercase letters and also try uh, running all the uppercase letters as lowercase as well. We're also telling it to try uh, deleting characters as well. So it's going to run through and try all possible passwords where there are up to four typos that could be a mix of letters that should be capitalized when they aren't or the other way around. Uh, or just accidentally leaving some characters off. And basically, uh, we're saying we're using the password list command this time, not the token list command. And we're basically just uh, giving it the path to find that password list file that is bundled with BTC Recover now that I'm using in this example. So if we just hit enter, uh, it is going to prompt us for the main password for the wallet. So we'll just type that in. And again, it's normal that it doesn't display it as you type. And uh, if you do get it wrong, the main password it will tell you okay so i've obviously just made a typo there so let's try again all right and now it's running so this is running to solve the second password for the wallet and there you go it's found it in this case this is a little bit confusing because the main password and the second password are the same um, but yeah, that's just successfully found the second password. It did have to go a little bit further through the test set this time. Uh, but again, it's sort of really just luck of the draw in terms of how far through uh, the test it gets before it finds it. For example three, we're going to do exactly what we just did in example two, but we're going to use a wallet extract this time. Now, the thing to mention with these blockchain.com wallets is that you can recover them in two ways. Uh, firstly, BTC Recover can work directly with the wallet file. Uh, so you've got the wallet file and you're running BTC Recover on your computer. And when the result is found, uh, it'll spit out what the password is. Uh, so someone could then spend those funds straight away or send them to a new address. Whereas uh, the other way that you can use BTC Recover with these uh, blockchain.com wallets is you can actually extract a small part of the wallet file uh, and actually run BTC Recover on a different computer or give it to a different person or something like that. And what that means is that uh, even if someone finds what the password for your blockchain.com wallet is, uh, unless they actually have the wallet file, uh, the complete whole wallet file, not just the extract, they won't actually be able to gain access to all of your cryptos. So uh, if your password that you're trying to brute force is particularly long and complex, uh, it might actually be a good idea to use the extract scripts that are in here 
and then to run that on a cloud server or something like that because it actually doesn't matter uh, if someone else gains access to the password or the results, they won't have enough to steal your funds. So basically when you use one of the scripts in the extract scripts folder, and uh, it's going to be this one here, so extract blockchain second hash. So what we're going to do is run this extract script. And what it does is it takes a small sample of the wallet file, which is enough to use to solve the password, but not for someone else to be able to take your funds. Uh, and we're using it for the second password. Though there is also another extract script for the main password as well. And the wallet file we're going to be using is uh, this one here that we just used in the previous example. And if we just hit enter, it'll ask us for the main password, because again, you do need to enter the main password to extract the script for the second password. And there you go. So this is what we want here. So this command is very similar to the one we used in the previous example, but instead of telling it what wallet file we want to use, and also instead of telling it uh, that we're looking for a second password, we're just going to use this argument here called data extract. Everything else is identical to the previous example. So if we just hit enter, it is going to ask us for the data from the extract script. So if you're in Windows command prompt, you can actually just left click and drag to highlight the uh, bit of data we want from the previous one. And if you right click, it'll actually copy it into the clipboard. And then you can actually right click again down here and it will paste. So we can just stick that in. And there you go. Just like before, it's found the password and uh, that is done. So there you go. It's important to keep in mind that BTC Recover isn't magic. If you have absolutely no idea what your password is, then unfortunately your chances of recovering successfully are extremely low. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, the process for using BTC Recover for a password recovery is pretty much the same for all wallet types in terms of the syntax you use in token list files, password lists, and so on. So my suggestion is if you're still having trouble getting your head around how things like token lists work, that you look at my videos that cover that in things like uh, BIP39 passphrase recovery, MetaMask password recovery, blockchain.com, Bitcoin Core, and so on. You know, the process and the syntax is the same for pretty much everything. It's just you're feeding a different wallet file uh, into BTC Recover. Like all my videos with BTC Recover, my suggestion is that you uh, start with either a test wallet or reproducing some of my usage examples just to get familiar with the tool and just to be confident that you are using it correctly. Uh, if you run into any specific issues, definitely just leave a question in the comment section. I'll do my best to reply to everything. And uh, if you're really totally stuck and need one-on-one -on -one help or a trusted recovery, then your best bet is to fill out the request form on my website. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.